Crazy. Um, you know, that Slayer tour, you know, because uh, we're on this current tour, Kill Thrax, right now. We're, so we end this, we have, I think we have seven weeks off, and then we go right back into another six weeks. We're doing six weeks here, seven weeks off, another six weeks on that. Well, honestly, I didn't know it was going to be Slayer's last tour. Okay. I, I'm, I'm very close, obviously, with Slayer. She carries <clears throat> one of my best friends. It's weird to even hear that, because Slayer will never die. Right. You know, it'll, it'll never... And um, I understand the touring. Touring life is not easy. It's not. It, it kicks the shit out of you. Look at us today, you and I, Mike. We're freezing our balls off right now. That's why I'm wearing this jacket. It's, <clears throat> you wake up out of a bunk. It smells from everybody the night before. <laughs> the whole thing. You got to get in the freezing shower because there's one dressing room in this place tonight. You know, there's one bathroom for all the, all the bands. We're very lucky to play music, but it's not all, you know, oh my God, this is so great. Right. It's great to be playing music for a living. I love that. Thank God. But, like, you know, this is a cool place, but maybe another dressing room with another bathroom where there's 40 guys that have to use that one bathroom the whole day. <laughs> Just this little, it's a little touring <laughs> thing that get on my nerves a little bit. It's like, you need more bathrooms. You, yeah. you get to wait online. There's like four people, five people deep waiting online to take a shit in the morning. I'm sure the show's yeah. going to be great. It's yeah. sold out already. It's going yeah, yeah. to be great. Look, we just started this tour yesterday, the first show, Montreal. Yeah. So we're starting the second day. You're used to coming from home where you have your own bathroom and all you, you know, your own bathroom, your own shower, you know, all that stuff. And just like niceness. You just want to come and just get into your, your zone. But it's all right. It's, it's still a great club. That's what matters. So. For me, I'm, I don't feel like that. I don't see, like the packing in, that's very... Um, it's a definite thing. I don't. I don't see Slayer ever really going away. I'm sure they're going to be doing one-offs. You know, I don't see that happening because they're my they're my friends. I said this before. Uh, they're they're too good to let that happen. Quite honestly, I get you need a break. You need a break. But I, maybe that's just from t touring. Touring. I mean, this touring is like we talked about. It's not as easy as you think it is. Well, you're away from your family. Like, we all have families. We just talked about family. You and I, Mike. Um, you're away. From, I'll be away from my kid for six six weeks right now. I mean, in the middle of school, I do his, I, 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 look, I make my son breakfast, my wife goes to work, I do his homework with him. Now that whole thing at home has to be turned over, you know this. Yeah. So it's not an easy life to, to leave to, for a long amount of time. So that gets, that gets to you after a while. And sometimes you just want to be home, but you also have to play. Yeah. So you have to really, it's a, it's a hard balance. But again, we're very fortunate. Thank God we're able to do this for a living. Nobody's saying that. But there is another side to it that's not so easy. So I hope that Slayer will want to do one-off shows at least, because you know they're Slayer rules, yeah. and they're my friends and all that stuff. But um, and I want to play with them, quite honestly. So I am looking forward to that tour. That's going to be a big celebration because that backstage, I don't know what's going to be crazier, the backstage or the or the front of the stage. Yeah. It's going to be a really fun tour. And uh, Lamb of God, you know, Testament, Behemoth. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Good people on that tour too. Very yeah. family. Yeah. It's crazy when you like when you say it like that. Wasn't that just yesterday, Mike? And you know, I was just I just signed for a, a fan outside, and he had it. And when you sign it, you still go back to the memories, man. He had a vinyl, and you go back to the vinyl. That just seems so familiar with me. I remember working on the record, then putting out the record, and go right into the tour. It's just like yesterday. It just shows you how fast life is. On purpose, yeah. And, it all worked. Different day now. Yeah. It's a completely different day. Music business still hasn't really caught up with technology at all. You have your streaming services, which are great, but they're still not paying what they should pay, and all the royalties and all that stuff. They will. That'll, that'll come. It's starting to, to come back, and I hope it, I hope it does, because music is our lives. The whole thing from Trust, obviously. It's a Trust song. And it was a great song. You ever hear their version? Awesome, just yeah. awesome. We, we, we jammed it a couple times. Actually, last time in Europe, we went out with Bernie and the guys, uh, which is just awesome, having fun with it. It's still one of the bigger songs of the night, you know, and it's fun just watching the crowd participate with it. It's, it's still great to do. So, and you know it's weird? If you don't do, because it's such a catalog with Anthrax now, if you don't do a song like Antisocial, people get upset. Yeah. It's like, why didn't you put, I'm sorry, but what do you, where do you pick out of now? You know, we want to do make everybody happy really including us and be nice but you're just trying to make everybody happy at once so you gotta mix it up you know what it is we're, we're such fans we're fans of music to begin with everybody in this band Anthrax is a diehard music lover and 
to be honest, having a, a, a guy like Joey who can pretty much sing anything, uh, Steve Perry, he sounds like Joey's. I remember when Joey came to audition for Anthrax way back, way back before I'm the Dangerous, obviously, uh, in the 80s. The first thing, it was me and Scott at the soundboard, and Joey went up on the mic, and the first thing he, he sang, that I knew he was the guy, and he just sang, oh, Sherry, should have been gone. That's the first thing I heard Joey Belladonna sing. That's the first thing. And I looked at Scott, he looked at me, we knew it immediately. And then he just kept going with other things, and the, the, the rest is history. But it makes it a lot easier for covers when we know we can pretty much do whatever we want to do. Yeah. And look, put it this way, like the Rush cover. Yeah, right. Come on. We're all diehard. I mean, Joey specifically, too. Charlie and I. Charlie and I grew up jamming to Rush. All the, I was playing bass to him and the drums, so it was nonstop Rush in the house all the time. So having Joey, who was a diehard Rush guy, too, it was such an easy blend. And he, he could do Getty like, I mean, he sings just like Getty at times. And in fact, during these shows, you'll see Joey will just start singing closer to the heart. He'll just start, and the crowd will sing it with him. It's just so cool. The 30 year, you, you talk about doing stuff like that. You know who's really good with this stuff? Charlie, our, our drummer Charlie, who's our artist. I mean, you have to understand, I grew up with him, so I know how great he is at art. He's just incredible. So he's got a great mind for that, and he, he designs a lot of that stuff. So I would really push it towards him and say, what do you think? Because he's got a great eye for that. And if you, you see Charlie, he can draw anything on a piece of paper, just like one of the best artists you've ever seen. You've got to remember, we're all fans, so I love that stuff. Yeah, growing up Kiss fans, they always give you that little extra. Yeah. It's always so cool to open something that's different, you know, and, and special from the band. So, yeah, why not? So, hopefully, we'll get that together with our record company. We usually do, though. We usually do. funny because since Scott's book people have approached me a couple of publishers and stuff and it's kind of in the works I haven't started writing it yet but it's getting the deal and all that stuff who to go with and all that stuff and, and look I'm not this famous guy or anything I don't know I just have a lot of fun stories I've been in this band for 30 years there's a lot of craziness that went on aside from being the diehard Kiss fan and, and meeting those guys when I was younger and that experience about just being a fan I come from that point of view Charlie, we grew up together, so yeah. yeah. My earliest Charlie and Scott thing, we, you've got to remember, I was a tech, I was a roadie. Yeah. Uh, when, when, because I really, I was starting to play bass, I was playing bass, but not to the level where I wanted to, you know, get in the band and stuff. It was a, more of a hobby. My thing was just being with them all the time as friends. Charlie, I grew up with, so it was, you know, we're related, it doesn't matter, but with Scott, we were just friends, so I would go to rehearsals, help them with everything, and pay, became their only guy to help them, really. And strings, you know, setting up all that stuff, lifting gear, and um, so it became a, a really easy friendship thing. And then, you know, guys from New York, you think about it, we were just close guys, and we knew we had this love of this music. And so, when the audition for Anthrax, of course, I did, and thankfully, got it. And um, it just became a love, a passion for what we do, and I think that's what drives us now. People ask us about uh, the, the records we put out. It's just that drive. Even now, I think Anthrax, Mike, I, I think Anthrax is hungrier now than we've ever been because we taste it and we're in a good place of writing and um, I think people are reacting to what we're writing, which is great. So that's why the, thankfully the records have, been, have done well and the tours are doing well. Everything's on the up. It's, it's, it's rising, which is really nice to see. I think there's a, a genuine hunger in this band, which I'm, I'm really happy to see. We can't wait to play, you know. You know, people ask me this. It's funny because, you know, I, I was a baseball player back then. I love music, but it was... So when I graduated high school, I was playing, I was playing ball. What do you do? Do you go to college for this? Because you could, and hopefully that'll work out, but that rarely works out. So I don't know if I was good enough for that, but I know my deep passion was music. So I graduated six months early from high school. Uh, I doubled up my credit, so I, I would stay at like 8 o'clock in the morning to like 4.30, almost 5 o'clock at night and got all my credits so I can graduate early at 17 years old to go on tour with Anthrax. So that's how important it was for me. That's how much love I had for it and then uh, I still feel like that. Nothing has changed for me. I, I want to write that great, that great song for Anthrax. I want, to, I want to have that energy with the fan where we connect. Like, that's, what these, that's what's great about these shows. The band connects to, the, uh, to the, the audience and that's the energy you feel. I don't think it's just the band coming up. I think it's together with, with the audience the fan and the band together 
and that's what makes the energy, that's what makes you want to come back. We're not up to that yet. Okay. All I do is try to do right now is keep them away from the stuff that isn't like rock. Not keep them away, but more, more say, I want to educate them on Led Zeppelin, the Beatles. I want to just start there, and we're, we're doing that now, but I don't want to force them. Yeah. I want it to be open. I want him to be open to listen to anything because I think it's important to listen to all musics. But I want to just steer him to not forget about rock because it's not played on the radio. Rock is not, and metal is not played on the radio other than like um, serious and stuff. That's an important fact of my life, you know. It was a big factor in my life, so I want him to have that. And it really nurtured me through it. It got me through some tough times, this metal stuff. So I want him to have that tool in life, and as you do your son now. So I think it's important. Uh, but all music is important. I think music in general is important to get you through a lot of tough times. It's a tool we're given, thankfully. I don't know if I'd cut it. I, I know I'd want it. And I'd do anything I had to do because I love, I truly love the fact that you're able to pick up a piece of wood and make music out of it. I think that's a beautiful thing. Just that, that thing right there, that, that's always been really cool. That you could pick up this piece of what was a tree one time put strings on it and some, and some pickups and, and it becomes an instrument. You can make people feel good with that. That's, that's a pretty cool thing. That's just the way I look at music. It makes you feel good. It's good for your soul. I would do anything at 16 to make that happen. I remember it was always, because I love music so much, how do I create, I always say, how do I create that? And when I found that I can do it, I was lucky enough to have that, to do it. Man, it was, it was just going from there. So uh, I, would, I would certainly, go do anything I, at 16 starting over I would still want that and now especially now it's so hard it's so hard to do it I feel bad for the kids but then again I think about the 80s and there was no thrash yeah. early before we, we, we started all this stuff you know uh, and we were in this well not, not just us but all these other bands if you really want it man it's just like anything in life you really want it uh, uh, you have to go for it I would say to my son that this means family. Because let's face it, the metal community is a family. It's, it's just us, right? It's just us. We have this, this outside pop world that gets all the accolades, they get all the awards and all that stuff, they get all the money, and we have to put our nose to the grind and make this work because we love, we have passion for this. That's the way I look at it, man. We have passion for this music. There's something in our guts that we have, that this, this music meets, that makes us feel, fuck yeah, man, I love this. It still does to this day. It's like this inclusive kind of family thing that is a group of people really believing in one thing that's really cool, so give it a chance. Again, I wouldn't push him, but I, I, I think it would come to him because this music meet, meets a lot of angst as you grow up, and that's why I think we, we, we love it so much. Rock and roll and metal, it really meets this fire in your belly, man. I think to this day, thank God for it. I need it. It's, it's a drug. It's a drug, man. Again, we're very lucky to do this for a living. I know how fortunate. Thank God. Believe me, I'm, I feel very fortunate. I don't, I don't take a day of it and say, wow, and look at it any other way, but I'm very thankful. I wake up and say, wow, I get to play music for a living. Thank you. I'm very fortunate. It's something that I've always wanted, and thank God I can do it. It's not easy. It's not easy to make a living now. You know that. You have to stay on the road and be away from your family, blah, blah, blah. But I'm very fortunate that way. Playing music is like, even tonight, it's just, playing a gig, that's a celebration of music, man. We're having a good time. It makes people feel good. All I want to do is make people forget about their problems for a little while and leave with a better frame of mind and say, Fuck yeah, you know, the, the kick in their step and move on. That, that's what you're supposed to do as a musician and entertainer. So it's, it's important to me. It really means a lot. The first place you get to jam with different friends, you know, and that's what's great about it because, you know, we're all on tour. You never, unless you're on the same tour, you never really get to hang and jam. Those things, what's great about that is you get to hang out together and bounce off of each other like, and, and it's probably something, a song that you love and you grew up on. So it's really fun to have a good jam with it. And plus, the greatest musicians, they're, they're just great musicians also you get to jam with. Something like that, you get, you get to jam with a lot of great musicians and have fun. So, and everybody wins, the audience wins, the, you know, we win, everybody wins, it's kind of a great vibe. What I, what I do, um, if I'm asked, I do it, you know, look, put it this way, everybody's on the tour, all the tour. we're on, we're on, we, like I said, we have a few weeks off, that's got to be with family, because <laughs> you, you don't have a lot of time to do a lot of other things, but got to work. They ask the same question with worship, 
And uh, my, my attitude towards this is, why, why would there be pressure? You can't worry about that stuff. All you can do is write the best possible song. We're the biggest critics. We are such pain in the asses with, with riffs and everything. It's just taking everything apart. That's why it takes a while to write records. We have to live with it and really make it sink as fans. You never lose the fan that you are. That's what I think. Yeah. And if it doesn't meet your, you know, what you need, your, your critique, it's not going out unless it's right for us. Because we're fans, and we think we want to relate to the fans. You know, and that's really important. So you can't let anything out until it's ready. Man, you know what I do? I should, here's what I do, honestly, because. That, this is why, Mike, this is why I'm so happy and grateful that I'm a, I'm a musician. Because I block out that world. That will take care of itself. That will take care of itself either way. Because, look, I have a family, you have a family, we're all worried and all that stuff. But what I, do, I don't do is get into politics because I, I don't want to make bring that into this because I just need music to get me out away. Yeah. For, for me, that's, that's how it works for me. Music for me takes me away from all that. Because at the end of the day, do we really have a choice in it? You have your vote, but do you really have a choice? So I really don't get involved with politics because I want to play music man and I think people want to hear from Frank Bello you know or a musician from like me I, I would I wouldn't want to hear from me I would want to hear Frank Bello with the next anthrax record or or next altitudes and attitude record you know that I have to shamelessly plug we're, we're putting that out in September October so nice. I'd rather do that instead of you know whatever because it's all it's all gonna take care of itself it has to it has to right and because uh, I have faith that it will. I, I, I read everything. I read everything in the New York Times every day, blah, 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 I have on my uh, computer, computer. But I keep my judgment for my, myself and I, my, my uh, opinions just because they're mine, you know. And I'm a musician. I, I, I just want to make people feel good. And whoever wants to do it, that's fine with me. Just, just personally me, I just rather keep it to myself. But I just, and at the end of the day, I really feel things will work out because they have to.